And breaking right now at 10 o'clock, looting at several popular stores in Center City and more looting here in Port Richmond. Sky Fox over what looks like a discarded merchandise situation all outside of a video game store there and a supermarket. It comes the same day charges were dismissed against a former Philadelphia police officer for fatally shooting a driver during a traffic stop. This is the 10 o'clock news. I'm Jason Martinez. I'm Sheba Russell. We want to get right out to one of the scenes tonight. Steve, what can you tell us? Well, here is the usual scene in Center City. It's the shopping district, Broadway, all, Broad Street, all the way to Rittenhouse Square. Walnut Street is shut down by police, block by block. The side streets you can see have been reopened the traffic. The Apple Store, one of the stores, hard hit. Now look inside here, and Apple, I just learned this from two detectives who went in to say, what was your loss? You'll notice a bunch of iPads and phones on the table to the right where the bag is. You'll see a bunch piled up there, right? That's various Apple products. And then on this table to the left. And so people grabbed all these expensive Apple products, and then when you steal them out of an Apple Store, they instantly go bad, meaning they don't work, and the, a camera comes on and a thing tells you, put this back to the Apple Store. So they realized it wasn't working, it was disabled, and they were just dropping them on the street. So they started recovering a lot of the, a lot of the products that were stolen. So that's why you see them piled up on two tables here. They've got to do an inventory. They didn't get them all back, but you see the man with the big case there in the cart, and he is getting ready to take them all in and see if they're still sellable or still even to be able to be put on a display. That's what happened to this store. But you can see the windows weren't shuttered. The doors were open at the time because this all happened before the store was closed. So they've been letting Philadelphia police detectives in here as well. Now we're going to go in the street here, which is shut down, and go down. That's 17th Street, then 18th Street, and that's where the Lululemon store is. Look at this video police provided us. Police were even here getting video as that store was completely looted. Those doors, when I got there, were still open. There was clothing all Oh, piles of clothes on the street, piles of clothes in the store, piles of clothes missing, obviously, but a whole lot of product got taken out of there, and people were running from there. So they are now cleaning up that store already under police watch. And so Lululemon, if you recall, just got looted itself in a smash and grab just about a month ago. And so this is the second time Lululemon was hit, now obviously a target of people when they go in and smash and grab, or in this case, start looting and according to police after this protest so that gives you a sense from one end to the other end of the shopping district from 16th all the way to 18th we saw then i was told foot lockers were hit and then also up at 7th and lehigh we were told the stores up there started getting hit in north philadelphia so sky fox may want to check that out because that was still ongoing when i got here SEPTA POLICE. DETECTIVE SOURCES TELL ME THEY HAD A LOT OF ARREST OVER AT 15TH AND CHESTNUT AND A GUN WAS RECOVERED AT 15TH RIGHT OUTSIDE OF CITY HALL, THAT TROUBLE SPOT ALL THE TIME. A PHILLY POLICE CAPTAIN TOLD ME MULTIPLE ARRESTS HERE AFTER MASSIVE THEFTS HERE, SO THEY COULDN'T EVEN HAVE AN EXACT NUMBER OF ARRESTS. I FILMED ONE OF THE ARRESTS WITH MY PHONE AS I ARRIVED HERE uh, SHORTLY AFTER 9 O'CLOCK, SO THEY WERE STILL ARRESTING PEOPLE a couple of hours after this all began here earlier tonight when it was still daylight out and these stores were still open. Now, police had, quote, tons of police on duty tonight, extra police just in case this happened, so they kind of quelled it. There's not the damage that we saw here during the looting in 2020. So not a lot of damage, not a lot of stuff smashed like we saw, not a lot of glass broken, nothing, hardly anything, but maybe on the side streets where this liquor store was hit hard, which I still haven't even found yet, uh, maybe that looks a lot worse than, say, the Apple store here. But police did a good job stopping this just as it started. And you can see they still have the streets closed for some time. People are allowed to walk here, uh, but probably the police are going to be here for a while. And again, we're seeing police get sent to help out in other spots in the city, including that spot in North Philly. So there's the scene right now. I'm sure we'll be keeping you up to date with other scenes throughout the newscast tonight. Uh, Steve, those uh, areas of Walnut and Chestnut that you're talking about have become notorious looting targets here. You mentioned in 2020, it certainly was. Uh, any indication that any of these businesses, in anticipation of any unrest tonight, did they board up? Was there any kind of s sign that they were anticipating this? No, the problem here is that you had people 
not knowing that there was going to be a march tonight, right? So what happened was we had the decision from the judge today in the police officer's case, and nobody knew what that decision was going to be. Then suddenly a march rally was called for City Hall around dinner time at 5.30. So this all erupted after that. And this was the first protest in the Eddie Azari case that was scheduled for downtown. All the others were peaceful and up in Kensington where it happened and where the family lives. This was the first one around City Hall. And why it was here? Because it was around the Criminal Justice Center mm -hmm. and where all the city business takes place. So that's why we had the protest here for the first time. And that's why these people were kind of caught you know, flat-footed in a way, yeah. not expecting anything, not boarding up and not worried. But the police were not, because the police, as soon as they heard about a protest, they were here in high numbers, extra police, and they were on added overtime, almost forced overtime in a lot of cases. So that's why they kept it under control for the most part. All right, Steve Keeley there on Walnut. Thank you, Steve. And tonight...